sure that all of your uh, all of your uh, springs and your nuts and uh, that sounds bad. <laughs> Everything's where it should be. Uh, make sure these nuts are flush. Your bolt hold up and spring is still there. And looks like we're good. All right, now we can move on to the trigger pack. All right, now we're going to start on the tr trigger group. Um, step one is to remove the screws on the pistol grip. Once the bottom plate is removed, you can use a, a long Allen wrench to remove the screw attaching the actual trigger mechanism to the housing. There we go. And then we remove this little screw right here on the electro switch. Um, it's going to be on the left underside of the switch. And be very careful not to strip this out because the uh, it's very easy to do. And be sure not to lose that screw. And when you've done that, just pull up on the selector. This is a little cap and push through to the other side and remove. Now it only goes in one way so you'll be fine on the reinstallation. Now when removing the trigger pack from the, uh, the trigger housing assembly You'll notice that there are two uh, 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 brass spacers or, or uh, uh, bushings uh, between the pack and the housing itself. They're not held there uh, by anything except uh, the pressure of the gap between the trigger pack and the trigger housing. So the best way to do it is to lay it down with the left side upright and pull gently, just kind of wiggle until it slides out. And you'll see those those uh, those two bushings on top. Now hold down on this plate and remove the brass bushings, the big one and the little one. And then remove this plate and it's under spring tension so just gently do it. And you don't want to lose this spring. Make sure that it's uh, in its groove and if you have uh, if you've got any of the molly lube that you used on the bolt hold open, bolt hold open spring apply it uh, just on top of this to make sure that it stays in place now we can remove each of the screws individually and upgrade it with the new um, allen head screws and it doesn't really matter what order you do it just do one at a time we can repeat the process of attaching the nut to the screw, sticking it in the indentation. These are a little trickier because the uh, they're open-sided. Flipping it around. And you want to make sure, I know I keep harping on this, but make sure that that nut is flush on the back side when you start screwing it in because otherwise you can tighten down the screw and the nut can be loose and so the screw is actually not tight if that makes any sense and there we go don't strip them out so just repeat the process one two three four or one two three four either way Okay, now that we've upgraded the uh, um, the assembly screws in the trigger pack, um, it's time to reinstall um, the trigger pack into the housing. Before we can do that, however, we need to install this plate and the brass bushings. Um, this is the trickiest part of the reassembly, in my opinion, as far as the trigger group is concerned. Um, the reason the, the reason for that is on the inside of this plate there is a tab you see a little tab sticking out 
on that tab is a dimple. The dimple has to go on the end of this spring right here and it compresses the spring. Now as you're compressing the spring the trigger has to be pushed forward just like this to allow enough clearance to lock the plate in place. At the same time each of these posts there's a big one and a small one. The big one goes in this groove the small one goes in this groove. So it goes like this. Spring onto dimple big groove uh, uh, the big uh, groove on the big post small groove on small post push the trigger forward and snap down so here's how I do it and again it's kind of a trial and error thing so I apologize if I have to cut the video a couple times I've epic failed at this a few times keep an eye on your spring because it will try to jump on you what I do is I stand it up try to get a better angle here stand up my spring and it helps the more the, the more molly lube you have on here the less your springs gonna move around and then I sort of just guide it down and when it's at a good angle I get that dimple into the end of the spring just like that so now it's compressed push it into the groove there's the the big uh, post into the big groove small post into the small groove and then push the trigger forward and it snaps down just like that now hold it with your finger because this little spring is a is a feisty one put your uh, your your brass bushings on keep holding it with your finger and then slide your trigger pack in and if one of those bushings popped off like it just did for me just reinsert it and it's catching on my uh, shirt there alright snap it in make sure that everything's functioning correctly that springs in a good alignment because when I pull this trigger, it's uh, it's moving the plate just fine. So that's what we want it to do, and it's returning to its previous position. Now we can reinsert our screw in the bottom of the housing. A long Allen wrench definitely helps here. install our selector switch there's a groove on the top of the switch I guess depends on what direction you're looking at it from but there's actually two and there's a little tab right there that slides in that groove and like I said it will only go in one way from the right side in so there's your selector like that on the other side make sure that you're putting it in the same direction so it's on it's on fire so um, this is actually cut out in one direction so it's only going to fit the way that you've installed it snap it together with your fingers and then reinsert your screw the teeny tiny one here being careful not to strip it out All right. check your selector function everything's good and reinstall the butt plate We can now do a complete inspection, make sure that everything's lined up, all our screws are in place, test the 